Good morning, everybody. My apologies for the uh, late start. Uh, I tried to close down the chat box and ended up closing down the whole of Teams on my system, so I've had to come back in again. Um, I see that we do have a problem with the video that we were hoping to show, so um, I'm going to put the officer on notice that we're going to have to go through the presentation from scratch. Um, so, Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this meeting of the Eastern Area Planning Committee, which is one of three area based planning committees of Dorset Council. Our area of remit covers the previous Purbeck District Council and most of the previous East Dorset District Council areas. For the benefit of the public, I'm Councillor Tony Coombs and I'm the chairman of this area planning committee. We have uh, a swathe of officers supporting us today. Anna Lee, who is the Service Manager for Service Development and Enforcement, Naomi Shimpkins and Pete Waters, who are Planning Case Officers, Steve Savage from Dorset Highways, uh, Simon Merritt will be reading out our representations, Phil Crowther is our Legal Support and David Northover, as always, our Committee Support Officer. Can I also thank the officers behind the scenes who are making today's virtual meeting possible? Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Council has had to put in place measures to enable the Council's decision-making processes to continue whilst keeping safe members of the public, councillors and council staff in accordance with the government's guidance on social distancing by applying new regulations for holding committee meetings from remote locations. At the annual meeting of Council on the 4th of May this year, it was agreed that all Council meetings that are not executive in nature would continue to be held virtually from the 7th of May 2021 until such time as social distancing requirements were removed on the 19th of July. We had hoped to, to be able to return to face-to-face -face meetings. However, with the uncertainty caused by rising cases in Dorset, the Council has resolved to continue the virtual meetings until September. Where a decision is required by this committee, members would express a minded to decision in respect of the recommendations set out in the officer report, with the decision being taken under officer delegated authority. Anna Lee is the appropriate officer in attendance to enact any minded to decision. This meeting is being live streamed to the public and a copy of the recording of the meeting will be available on the website after the meeting. Public participation will be in the form of written statements as opposed to public speaking. We will now go through the agenda as has been published. David Northover, do I have any apologies for absence, please? David, you're on mute. None received, Chairman. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go through the roll call for the benefit of the public. Shane Bartlett, Vice Chairman. Present, present Madam Chairman. Mike Barron. Present, Madam Chairman. Alex Brenton. Present, Madam Chairman. Robin Cook. Present, Madam Chairman. Mike Dyer. Present, Madam Chairman. Barry Gorringe. Present, Madam Chairman. David Morgan. Present, Madam Chairman. Julie Robinson. Present, Madam Chairman. David Took. Present, Madam Chairman. Bill Trite. Uh, present, Madam Chairman. And John Worth. Present, Madam Chairman. That's fantastic. A full house and good morning to you all. I know I've already said it to some of you, but to everybody. Are there any declarations of pecuniary or other conflict of interest, bias or predetermination by members of the committee? OK, if something does come up during the presentation, um, please let us know as soon as possible. Uh, you are asked to note the minutes of the meeting held on the 28th of July. Uh, public participation. Members of the public have been invited to submit written representations limited to 450 words. The maximum accepted are three under each category and are accepted in strict date and time order. Due to the technical difficulties we've had, I have made um, a slight amendment to that for this one occasion. Members of Dorset Council who are not members of this committee and who also wish to address the committee will be allowed to speak to the committee. 
and that has been done. Okay, all requests have to be registered with Democratic Services by 8.30 on Monday the 23rd of August. Are there any representations from the public that do not relate to matters on the agenda today, David Northover? None received, Chairman. Okay, so we have one application before us today. <coughs> Has there been any request for deferral or withdrawal, please? None, Madam Chairman. Okay, that's lovely, thank you. So we'll go straight into item five, 62019-0639, which is an outline, outline application for up to 15 residential dwellings, site reprofiling and associated infrastructure with all matters reserved apart from vehicular access from West Lane at land north of West Lane, Stobra, Wareham. And that's pages 25 to 58 on the agenda. In the light of the technical difficulties regarding public rep representation, which emerged after the last meeting, the previous Monday 2 decision had not been implemented and it has therefore been decided to bring this item back to committee so that members can hear the public and parish council representations as well as the agent submission from the previous meeting. We had hoped to be playing the video recording for consistency purposes. However, again, due to technical difficulties, that's not possible. So Pete Waters will be taking us through his full presentation. I will point out that there is no change to the officer report, nor to the recommendations from the previous meeting. Members following the, the video, um, the uh, report and the public representations, you will then have the opportunity for a full debate on all the information before you today, as though this is the first time you have debated this item. So following the presentation, members of the public, planning agents, applicants and town and parish councils who have made written submissions will have them read out by Simon Merritt if he's been able to join the meeting, uh, if not by David Northover. Neither of these two have been involved with the merits of the application. They will, the public representation will be read out in the following order, public against, public in support, the applicant or agent, town or parish council, and then any local member. Following the public participation section, I will ask officers if there are any salient points they wish to clarify. I will then open the item for questions and debate by members of the committee. In order to run the meeting, can I request that members of the committee direct any remarks and questions through the chair and I will invite members to speak in turn. Requests to speak need to be made via the chat facility only. I can't multitask too many times. And please can you keep your microphones on mute when you're not speaking to maintain audio and video quality. Uh, at the end of the debate for transparency, I will take the vote by roll call. If you wish the vote to be recorded in the minutes, then three or more members need to make the necessary request. When I do the roll call, I will also ask members to confirm that they've heard the entire presentation and debate before they cast their vote. So apologies for the very long in introduction. So Pete Waters, over to you. Thanks, Madam Chairman. Um, I believe the video might be working. Um, so if you're happy to continue, uh, we will play the video from the previous planning committee. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. Oh. Can't hear. There is no video coming up on my screen. I think the mic, Dave North, over, I think the microphone on, on the video might be off at the bottom. Okay, that says uh, a lot. I've not seen the video either. Uh, 
I think we might have to make an executive decision and go ahead with the presentation by Pete if we can't load it. Pete, I'm going to ask you to go through the presentation again, please. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, bear with me, I should just call it up to the screen for us. Uh, I hope you can all see that. Lovely. I can't, okay. I can't see anything. Just as Dorset Council at the moment, Peter. Yes, that's right. It's the first okay. slide of the presentation. Fine. Okay, just to be aware, everybody, my screen is only showing the meeting participants. I've got no, nothing else on screen. Okay. Would you like me to proceed or? Yes, you, pr you proceed. I will come out of the meeting and come back in again. Um, Shane, if you need to, can you please just take over for a moment? And I'll see if reloading the uh, meeting sorts out my technical problem. Will do, Madam Chairman. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Continue. Chairman. I'll catch up with you in a sec. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, so <clears throat> the application that is being considered today is for an outline application for the erection of up to 15 residential dwellings, um, site reprofiling and associated infrastructure with all matters reserved apart from vehicular access from West Lane. Uh, the application is being presented to the planning committee following the scheme of delegation referral process as the service manager for development management and enforcement considers that the concerns raised by the parish council warrant the application being considered by the planning committee. Um, there are a number of updates that I uh, need to take you through prior to getting into the main presentation. Um, after the report was published, the government released the latest version of the National Planning Policy Framework. Um, and as a result of that, some of the paragraph numbers that are referenced in the report have now changed, uh, notably all references to paragraph 172 of the National Planning Policy Framework should now refer to paragraph 176. Um, in the um, condition 11, proposed condition 11, then it should also now be referenced to paragraph 166 of the MPPF. Um, I'd just like to make it clear that although there have been some changes to the MPPF, none of those changes have resulted in a change to the recommendation of the application. So for context, uh, the site is located at the western end of the village of Stobra. Uh, Stobra itself is approximately a mile to the south of Wareham um, and the village sits within the parish of Arn. Moving on to a map of the application site, um, the site itself is situated between uh, Hollow Oak Road, which is to the east here, and the A351, which is the Stober and Wareham bypass, which runs to the west, and West Lane itself runs to the south of the site. So the site sits immediately outside the settlement boundary of Stobra. Um, so Hollow Oak Road to the east is within the settlement boundary of the village. Um, it's worth noting that the site is approximately 160 metres to the west of the Bog Lane Sang. Um, I'll look at that in more detail in a moment. Uh, and the applicant also owns land to the north and west of the site, and that is shown in blue on here. Um, there is a public right of way that runs to the north of the site coming along here, and that provides a connection between Stobra and the Bog Lane Sang. So just moving on to show you some photographs of the site, um, just to give you a feel for the site. So the, this photograph is taken looking from south to north, so effectively from the existing entrance on West Lane. Um, as you can see, the land is currently undeveloped and in agricultural use. Uh, you can see a tree line to the left of the screen and the A351 main road is behind that tree line. 
and you can see to the right of the screen is a mature hedgerow and tree line and that is on the boundary of hollow oak road so just moving on uh, the photographs taken further into the site you can see the little key that i've put down here um, so we're looking now towards the northern end of the site um, and it's worth noting that the land levels do start to dip slightly as you head towards the floodplain beyond the site so now we're looking back across the site from what would be the northern end of it looking back towards west lane um, again you can see the tree line of the a351 here uh, the hedgerow is um, providing a boundary between West Lane and the site. Moving on, um, this is a photograph taken from pretty much the middle of the site, uh, looking towards Hollow Oak Road. Um, and as you can see, there is a good degree of established screening there um, along the, the boundary of Hollow Oak Road, um, providing a, a fair amount of screening for a lot of the residential properties already there. So moving on, looking to the northwestern corner of the site and into land that is in the ownership of the applicant. Um, again, a couple of things to note here. The first is the established tree line and the second, if you can make it out, is that the land levels start to decline the further north you go. But that is outside of the site. It's in the applicant's ownership, but it's not within the application site. Uh, moving on again, so again, looking from the north end of the site along the A351 screening, as you can see, you cannot see the A351 at all from here. So moving on again, um, we're looking beyond the site now onto the floodplain and then where in which you can see in the background here. And again, just to point out the decreasing land levels. Uh, the final photograph to show you of the site itself is taken looking towards Meadow Cottage, which is the nearest residential property to the site. Um, and as you can see, um, uh, there is a, a good degree of, again, established screening um, for this property. Um, so we're now outside the site, uh, an image that I've borrowed from Google. Um, and the reason I've, I'm showing you this is to, so you can see that the neighbouring property Meadow Cottage has no um, windows or doors on that elevation that would be affected by the proposed development. Um, so I'm now going to take you along uh, West Lane itself. Um, we're looking from the existing east entrance. Um, as part of the proposal, the highways team uh, provided uh, comments stating that a pavement would be required to connect to Corfe Road, which is the main road in the village. You can just sit on the end of this map here, um, and that would provide a pedestrian link to the school. Um, the highways team have confirmed that there is sufficient highway land to achieve this, um, and there is a condition, condition nine, which would require the works to be completed before the occupation of the dwellings. Um, the applicant would need to enter into a two, uh, section 278 agreement with our highways team in order to provide that pavement. Um, so I'm just going to take you a brief uh, walk along here. Um, as you can see, this is taken further along West Lane. This is the junction with Hollow Oak Road. And what you can see here is that uh, there is a pavement along Hollow Oak Road provide, um, into the cul-de-sac and it comes to an end on West Lane. So there's no continuation of a pedestrian link. And what, um, what would happen as part of this application, if it were to be approved, is that the new pavement would uh, join with the existing one and provide a pedestrian link not only for the residents of the proposed development but also of Hollow Oak Road into the centre of the village. Um, so we're looking at the end of West Lane coming towards the junction with Corfe Road. You can see the junction is here. Uh, it would join the existing pavement. Um, just to make you aware, right behind this tree, this, this tree line is Stober Primary School. So what we would be achieving is providing a pedestrian link from both Hollow Oak Road and the West Lane development to the primary school. Uh, I'm now showing you some photographs along the public footpath that runs to the north. This connects to the Bog Lane Sang um, and as part of the proposal Natural England have um, requested that a condition is applied requiring footpath 
to be built within the site that would connect to this public footpath and the idea is is that residents of the development could then join the existing footpath network and it easily access the bog lane sang um, which is obviously good for encouraging them to exercise and um, in the bog lane sang as opposed to heathland um, in the vicinity uh, this photograph is looking across towards where I'm so effectively I'm looking from the the boundary of the applicant's land but not the boundary of the site across where the floodplain actually sits uh, and this is the tail end of the footpath um, and it connects to the bog lane sang there's a road crossing there um, leading straight into the sang there's also another footpath or uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, another pavement on the A351 bypass, which also connects to the Bog Lane Sang Junction, uh, sorry, the Bog Lane Sang Crossing Point. Um, and this would provide another option for residents to access the Sang if they didn't want to use the footpath. Um, following the A351 down, this is the junction with West Lane. As you can see, there's um, the footpaths there and the site itself is well screened. And so coming full circle, we're back on Westland. Uh, again, when the bike was built, a footpath was installed. Sorry, a big pun, a pavement was installed on the first part of West Lane and then it comes Pete, to a we've halt. We've just lost you again. Do you want to just repeat the start of that slide, please? Yes, apologies. Um, so this is we've come full circle on this slide. Um, we're back at the junction with West Lane and the A351. Uh, and you can see that when the A351 bypass was built, there was a pavement installed um, along this part of the road, um, but it comes to an end. And so what would ha happen as part of this development if it were approved is that would connect the pavements. So you would have a pavement link leading to the A351 and up to the Bog Lane Sang and a pavement link into the village centre to Corf Road leading to the primary school. So it would improve pedestrian access in and around the area. Uh, moving on to a parameter plan. Um, I've got to caveat that all matters other than access are reserved at this point. So we are only considering the principle and access with this application, but this just gives an indication of, of what's being proposed. Um, notably, there would be a small embankment at the end to reinforce the existing change in land levels. Um, and it provides it provides an overview of what is being proposed. And again, this is an indicative master plan. Um, again, I need to clarify that the layout is a reserved matter, um, but what this does show is that the scheme is achievable um, and in terms of their their thoughts in terms of the design, they're looking at um, mimicking Hollow Oak Road in, in terms of having a linear pattern development with a single arterial road, um, so very similar to what was done here. So moving on to the matter that is to be considered today, um, and that is the access. Um, the uh, proposed access has been considered by the council's highway team. Um, they consider it to be acceptable um, and they consider that it doesn't have any harmful impact on upon highway safety. And you can see here the connection to the existing pavement. Um, the proposed pavement isn't shown on this slide um, and that's because it's something that has been discussed and agreed during conversations in the planning application and the final details of the pavement would be agreed as part of the section 278 uh, agree, uh, application with the highways team. Again, visibility splays, um, highways have looked at this and they're satisfied that the visibility splays are sufficient um, and have raised no objection to this, so they're satisfied that the um, access would not present a danger to highway safety. Um, at this point on West Lane, there's a 30 mile an hour speed limit. So the application when submitted was to be assessed against policy REAs of the Pebbit Local Plan Part 1 and that's the rural exception site. Um, and initially the applicant offered 50% affordable housing. Um, we employed an independent district valuer service to assess the viability of the site, um, who advised at the time that 60% affordable housing would be achievable. However, as the 
application progressed, um, the recommendation, the requirement from a highway safety point of view to provide a, a pavement brought the viability back down to 50%. Um, uh, officers have concluded that the proposal would therefore not be compliant with policy RE as the Royal Exception Site policy, which allows for a small amount of open market housing to facilitate affordable housing on a site. Um, and officers consider that 50% um, open market does not constitute a small amount. However, in the, in the meantime, the Our Neighbourhood Plan has been adopted. It went to referendum in May and was um, made by the council in June. Um, and so that now forms part of the development plan um, that the application is considered against. Um, and so therefore, uh, we have considered the application against the criteria of the Our Neighbourhood Plan. Um, going through the Our Neighbourhood Plan, the, the plan itself does not allocate um, any sites for development. Instead, um, they have opted for a, an approach of small sites um, and they provided a number of criteria, which I will briefly take you through. Um, so uh, the first criteria is to be within adjoining or otherwise well related to the divine, defined development boundaries of Stober or Ridge, um, excluding any housing development on land within the 400 metre buffer around protected heathlands. So as I showed you earlier in this presentation, the application site is adjacent to the existing settlement boundary, which is Hollow Oak Road. Um, it's not within 400 metres of protected heathland um, and therefore um, it's acceptable on the first point outlined. Um, in terms of being in keeping with the distinctive character of Arm Parish and its settlements, the design and the layout are reserve matters. Um, so that's a matter that will be considered at more detail at a reserve matter stage if members are minded to recommend approval for this application. Um, but uh, officers are satisfied that a suitable design can be achieved, um, but obviously the details of that would come at a later stage. Um, so the next point is not to individually or cumulatively harm the landscape or settlement character or heritage designations unless the harm is not substantial and public benefits justify the scale of harm or loss within national policy. Um, the site is within the AOMB as is the whole of the village and the AOMB management team have been consulted on the proposal and they do not consider that there is any um, harmful impact on wider views within the AOMB um, and therefore they have raised no objection. Um, we are also providing a public benefit in terms of providing the pavement as well as the footpath across the site in order to access the school and also more easily access the bog lane sand. Uh, the proposals have to take full account of the potential effect they will have on neighbouring properties. Um, officers have considered this in the report. The, the properties on Hollow Oak Road, which are the only neighbouring residential properties, all have um, good sized rear gardens and therefore it's perfectly achievable to um, make sure that there is good, um, an appropriate distance between the proposed properties and the neighbouring properties so as not to result in a loss of privacy. Um, and so officers are satisfied that that can be achieved. Again, the layout um, is a reserve matter, so that will be considered in more detail at the reserve matters application if the outline is approved. However, officers are happy that it can be achieved. Um, so in line with national guidance, um, not to be at the risk of flooding from tidal surface or groundwater, I will come into this in a bit more detail in a moment if I may. Um, the proposal must not exceed 15 dwellings on any one site. Um, at or adjoining Stobra, so the proposal is for up to 15 dwellings, um, so it's compliant with that. Uh, the proposal must be restricted to ensure that such homes are occupied only as a principal residence. Um, now I'm aware um, of the ongoing um, examination of the emerging Perbeck local plan and the proposed policy that would restrict second home ownership. Um, and the current weight that that can be given. But what I would advise here is that this is an adopted neighbourhood plan. This has gone through examination, it's gone through referendum, has been made by the council. And therefore, in this instance, this policy is considered by officers to carry sufficient weight. And therefore, officers are recommending a planning condition 
that would restrict the homes to be occupied as a principal residence in line with policy for of the our neighbor plan uh, constitute an appropriate mix of sizes of homes in line with policy one um officers considered that they they have done so and have liaised with the housing needs officer as well about this and i'll come into that in a bit more detail in a moment um, and any effects of post homes on European sites are screened to assess whether they're likely to be significant. Um, so officers are satisfied and Natural England are satisfied that there will not be a harmful impact on uh, European sites. Um, so in terms of the criteria set out by the Our Neighbourhood Plan, officers are satisfied that it meets the criteria policy for the small sites. Um, I do need to um, explain that the supporting text for this policy outlines this site as being, um, and I quote, strongly being strongly opposed by a significant number of residents. Um, and it states this is due to a lack of pavement and use of West Lane as an informal pick up and drop off for school children. Um, uh, WIS officers have been mindful of that. It's not within the policy itself. Um, however, we have sought to try and address some of the concerns that are raised in the Nahib plan. So as I've already explained, uh, a pavement would be provided. And in terms of West Lane being used as an informal pick up and drop off for school children, its informal nature does mean that uh, they don't particularly have a right to do that, although there's nothing to stop them doing it. So officers do consider um, that work has been done to try and address the concerns raised in the supporting text of the Our Neighbourhood Plan. But again, it's worth pointing out that there's nothing in the policy itself that prohibits development on this site. Uh, moving on, uh, if my computer will let me, there we are. So on to the uh, housing provision. Um, so as you can see, the affordable housing provision constitutes uh, four one bed flats, two two bed houses and one three bed house. An open market would constitute two two bed houses, four three bed houses and two four bed houses. Uh, this mix has been agreed by our senior housing needs officer. Um, you will see that there are eight open market units and seven affordable units. Um, and as part of the proposal in order to achieve 50% um, uh, a contribution would be required as well to make up that deficit of financial contribution as well as the seven affordable units. Um, so just by means of context, um, explaining where the SANG is. Um, so the R application site is here and the Boglin SANG is here. So as you can see, we're very close by. Uh, you cross over here and there is a footpath that leads directly into the SANG. So it is well within walking distance um, and therefore is considered to be acceptable. Um, and you can also see access to the SANG, as I've explained, will come from a footpath. This is an indicative um, crude drawing that I've done of a potential footpath route. There is a condition proposed to provide full details of where the footpath would go in the reserve matters application. Obviously at this stage, because the layout is a reserve matter, um, we, we're not going to ask for the exact position of the footpath, but these are a, a potential hypothetical routes. And then you also have the option of the pavement along the A351. So, and they're roughly equidistant in terms of um, accessing the SANG. So um, we would provide good linkage for residents to be able to uh, cross over to enter the SANG. And then just to show on the screen whether pavement provision is proposed, um, as I've explained, it would be secured by a planning condition and, and then delivered through a section 278 planning agreement with our highways team. Um, coming on to flooding, I did say I was going to come back to this. Um, this map shows the flood risk zone, uh, flood risk zones two and three. Um, as you can see, the site sits outside of the current flood risk zones. Um, and this, this correlates quite nicely with some of the photographs that I showed you earlier in terms of the changing land levels. Um, I am conscious that the Environment Agency is currently updating its data. Um, I have been in contact with them to check that the proposed changes are unlikely to result in issues for this site. Um, they don't consider it likely that that will be the case. However, they have recommended a condition that a further flood risk assessment is provided um, and officers have 
uh, put that condition as a recommended condition. And that is really a belt and braces approach. Just to note, there is a protected tree. It's not within the site, but it is adjacent to the site um, in one of the gardens of Hollow Oak Road. Um, an agricultural method statement will be required, but our tree officer is happy that um, a suitable uh, methodology can be found in order to protect that tree. So to conclude, uh, the principle of development, uh, as I've explained, we consider the proposal is compliant with policy for the small sites of the our neighbourhood plan. Um, in terms of highway safety, obviously the access is the matter that isn't reserved. Um, this is considered acceptable. Um, and in terms of providing safe pedestrian access subject to a gramping condition requiring the provision of the pavement, um, the proposal is considered to be acceptable in terms of highway safety. Uh, as I've mentioned, the AOMB, um, the AOMB management team have been consulted and raised no concerns about the proposal. Uh, moving on to the scale design and impact and the character of the area. Uh, the outline, this is an outline application, but the density is considered to be acceptable. Um, there are other examples of this. Um, Stobra Meadow, which is in the village, has a similar density. Um, and Hollow Oak Road itself has a higher density than is the case in the historic core of the village. Uh, moving on to the impact upon the living conditions of occupiers of neighbouring properties. Um, as I've stated, there are good distances between the neighbouring properties and properties shown on the indicative master plan. But if this application is approved, a reserve matter stage officers will obviously be scrutinising this to make sure that uh, the relationship is acceptable. But we are satisfied that that can be achieved. Um, in terms of heathlands mitigation, uh, there would be the usual contribution through the community infrastructure levy, as well as um, the provision of a footpath to link to the existing uh, public footpath to the Bog Lane Sang, uh, which was at the um, request of Natural England. So Natural England is satisfied with this approach. Um, biodiversity, um, the proposal is acceptable subject to conditioning of the implementing the recommendations in the biodiversity mitigation plan um, an appropriate assessment has also been undertaken for the site um, as i've explained with the flood risk and drainage this is considered to be acceptable subject to a further flood risk assessment due to emerging data um, and conditions are also proposed in terms of surface water drainage to ensure that surface water drainage is removed from the site successfully and also doesn't prejudice neighboring sites or properties and finally, uh, protected trees um, subject to a condition requiring full agricultural method statement. The tree officer is satisfied that there's no uh, nothing of concern here. Um, so officers consider that all significant planning matters have been appropriately or adequately addressed. Um, the recommendation, therefore, is to grant permission subject to planning conditions and the completion of a section 106 legal agreement to provide affordable housing provision of seven dwellings plus a financial contribution of eighty two and a half thousand pounds if that section 106 legal agreement is not signed um, the recommendation is to refuse permission um, if that legal agreement is not completed within six months of the date of this committee or such a, an extended time as agreed by the head of planning thank you Thank you very much, Peter. Seems a day for uh, technical difficulties, but very well done. Um, we have Steve Savage with us today. Um, at the last meeting, we had Colin Graham as our highways officer. He has since retired and Steve has taken over and he has been fully appraised with this application. Steve, is there anything you want to say now or do you want to wait till we've heard representations and reply to questions from councillors? Thank you, Madam Chairman. I, I think that the case officer has given you a very accurate um, impression of what's proposed here. I think the simplest thing would be to ask any questions should they arise, if that's OK with you. That's absolutely fine. I thought I'd give you the opportunity. Thank you. OK, so we will then move on to the public representation. Um, as I alluded to in my introduction, um, normally we limit the public speakers to three in favour of the application and three objection. Um, given the sensitivity of this application and the technical difficulties we had last time, we received two 
uh, representations after the publication of the agenda, which meets our criteria, but we also received two in advance of the publication of the agenda. And it's these two that I have allowed as an extra on this one occasion. So we will have four um, objections from the public um, and then we will go through the others as normal. So do we have Simon Merritt with us or is it going to be down to David to read them? Uh, Chairman Simon indicated that he he had the link, but if if you want me to uh, if you want me to to do it in any in any event, I'll, I'll crack on now. Yes, please. I think uh, we need to keep the, the flow That's of the it. meeting running. So over to you to read the representations. Oh, okay. Um, first representation received from Jane Freeman. I strongly object to the planning application. I have lived at Hollow Oak Road for many years and have seen the field behind my house saturated most years. This floodplain between my house and the tidal river Froome prevents my land flooding. My fear is that if this field is displaced by the proposed materials for a large building site, the present safety of Hollow Oak Road will be lost. We already see the severe impact of flooding and the junction of West Lane with the A351. Sea levels are rising and the flood risk from the river Froome will increase. The International Panel on Climate Change Report, IPCC, this month reports weather patterns changing markedly. Can Hollow Oak, can Hollow Oak Road residents see the hydrological uh, report on what will happen to our gardens and homes if the site is developed? How will service water be disposed of? What will the effect of the existing water course, the soakways and the main sewer be on our homes? Dorset Council's flood risk team said that the management of surface water runoff must demonstrate the proposed development is not to be placed at risk and that no off-site worsening is to result. There has been no assurance that no off-site worsening is to result. The platforms, the platforms may help the new development, but they will not help Hollow Oak Road. Having nowhere else to go, the water will flow down and into the gardens of Hollow Oak Road. Impervious services on the proposed site and extensive concrete areas will not allow drainage and will push water elsewhere. A material consideration is that the proposed platform will overlook our properties in Hollow Oak Road being above the hedge at the end of our gardens. Will Hollow Oak Road residents receive an assurance from the council that Hollow Oak Road will not flood? What indemnity will the council provide for existing properties in the event of them being affected in the future? This site has no flood defences. We are told that Hollow Oak Road might flood. I fear that my home and those of my neighbours will flood. The risk is too high and there's the risk to highway safety on West Lane. I also have concerns about highway safety. Given the amount of traffic I see on West Lane, particularly on school days, a precedent to double it will be reckless given the proximity of the proposed site's main access to the A351. Will there be sufficient parking? on the new site for two car households and their visitors. If not, even more people will try and park on West Lane. This already hampers visibility for most of us. Uh, this uh, received from Beatrice Smith. I strongly object to the above outlined planning application to build 15 homes on the field adjacent to Hollow Oak Road. I have lived in Hollow Oak Road adjacent to the site for 57 years and know that every winter season this field becomes very wet. The situation has worsened since the building of the A351 bypass. This meant the water flowing from the Purbeck Hills, which previously dispersed across fields and woodlands to the river Freem, is now restricted. Flooding regularly occurs at the juncture of West Lane and the A351 bypass. This flooding increases the water level in Riders Field, and if more hedgerows and trees are removed, this will only add to the problem. With climate change, increased rainfall and an increase in sea levels, this very low level site seems entirely unsuitable for development. Placing new houses on a platform may protect the development, but will certainly increase the flood levels to our existing properties in Hollow, Hollow Oak Road. From a road safety point of view, a fourth opening onto the narrow west lane seems foolhardy. West Lane is often used as a rut run between the A351 bypass and Corfe Road, and vehicles frequently turn in at high speed. The proposed development 
site exit is very near to this turn off, making safe exiting risky. I understand that the proposed development is not required to meet any current unmet housing need. Arm Parish Council are opposed to any building on the site. The site is within open countryside outside the current Stobra settlement boundary. It is an area of outstanding natural beauty and the gateway to the Isle of Purbeck. Tourism being one of Dorset's main industries, a long acoustic fence and yet more houses as our visitors enter the Isle will not be a welcome sight. How much more suitable to continue to see cows grazing and the wildlife flourishing? Government guidelines on carbon levels should surely be encouraging everyone to preserve as much of the natural habitat as possible. Cutting down trees and tearing up hedgerows, plus pouring concrete onto a green site defeats those aspirations. To conclude, I feel that this site is entirely unsuitable for housing development. The site is too wet, low lying and liable to flooding. Uh, next, from Miriam Abbott and Richard Holroyd. We'd like to express our objection to planning application due to interlinked concerns about flood risk, climate change and urbanisation of the water meadows. The flood risk assessment is based on out of date sea level and peak river flow climate change allowances. Both higher central and upper end allowances should be calculated for both sea level rise and the peak river flow as the field is vulnerable to flooding. Considering projected sea level rises, the still water tidal level is close to four metres, whilst the level of the site and of Hollow Oak Road is below four metres. The national policy is not to develop new homes on land lower than this level, so this alone should rule out this field for development. The drainage system proposed does not offer adequate flood protection. Any malfunction of the system or a large storm which uses the whole field to channel rainwater to the Froom or a higher tidal flood set to increase 1.6 metres in the southwest over the next 100 years risks flooding the site, Hollow Oak Road and or the A351 bypass. In the long term, if the new and or existing housing becomes untenable due to flooding, then there will be a loss rather than a gain to housing provision. The wider context for this is that the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has just issued the starkest warning that we must act immediately to avoid catastrophic climate change. Quotes, we must treat climate change as an immediate threat just as we treat, must treat the connected crisis of nature and biodiversity loss, waste and pollution as immediate threats. Ecosystems degradation, damages nature's ability to re reduce the force of climate change. Every ton of CO2 adds to global warming. Every citizen needs to play their part in making systematic changes to stop the current warming. End quotes. Consider your legacy. To approve this development, one's counter to the need to mitigate climate change, protect and restore ecosystems and biodiversity. For future generations, consider a planning policy that involves the redevelopment, repurposing of an existing urban areas to lower their carbon impact, minimising embodied carbon through the reuse of existing structures and building materials. A policy of guaranteeing protection for all green spaces and wetlands and enhancing their ability to act as carbon sinks. To prioritise development over climate change mitigation risk exceeding 3% centigrade global temperature rise, rendering many low-lying coastal cities and economic regions uninhabitable, leaving millions of people without homes. William Evans. I have previously stated my strongest possible objection to the planning application for 15 residential dwellings on West Lane in my letters to Dorset Council on 13th December 19 and 11th May 20. I hereby briefly list two very serious issues of concern raised to ensure the committee fully take account of the ramification should permission be granted. Proposed site is outside the existing defined settlement boundary. High risk of flood within the development. Uh, and here's a list of points. Um, increased risk of flooding adjacent to the development. Please note that the road at the junction of West Lane and the bypass flooded again on 12th July this year. Events such as this are more likely to occur during global, due to global warming. This matter alone should be developed to stop any development. Loss of farming, loss of farmers grazing cattle, loss of farmers hay crop and silage for winter feed. 
loss of farming heritage that currently form part of the tradition and character of the village, increased pressure on places at the local junior school, traffic risk to pedestrians on West Lane, increased risk of road traffic accidents at the junction of the bypass and the proposed new junction, increased traffic congestion, loss of rural culture and green space, increased likelihood of second home ownership. The scheme goes against the Arn National Neighbourhood so the Arn Parish Neighbourhood Plan, too large a development for the location of the village and setting, density of the development is too high, proposed design not in keeping with rural aspects, the overall design pushes too many boundaries, high impact on wildlife, green space, farmland, watercourse, hedgerows and general wildlife habitat loss, encroachment onto the AO&B, there is no drastic need as housing requirements will be met in other identified locations, Finally, if this development were permitted, it would be a mistake that could never be reversed. I request that the planning application be rejected. Uh, just coming to uh, the chair of Arne Parish Council, Shelley Cranshaw. On behalf of Arne Parish Council and our parishioners, we put these objections to the planning committee. This land will be increasingly vulnerable to flood risk from the River Froome due to sea level rise and river is tidal up to where and beyond. The EA anticipates that this rise to be between 200 and 400 millimetres by 2060 over 1990 levels. Higher sea levels combined with stormier conditions add to the risk. We're concerned that fresh water drainage at the site will in consequence be severely impaired. Already significant rainfalls lead to surface water being unable to drain away at the juncture of West Lane, the A351. Flood pane sites are not normally used for housing and this site has no flood defences. We acknowledge and applaud DC's targets to reduce greenhouse gases. In an effort to deal with the site's wet conditions, the applicant will introduce would introduce to the site a large amount of concrete. Not only would this add to our carbon problems, it would adversely affect the drainage of the neighbour's land at Hollow Oak Road. We do not accept that this application meets the def definition of a rural exception site. It is not a small site to be used for affordable housing in perpetuity. Eight of the 15 proposed properties are to be on the open market. Of the seven affordable units, four and one are one bedroom flats. We're concerned about highway safety. West Lane is a short, narrow, curving country road. It has visibility problems and is largely without a pavement. There is a primary school situated at the North End. The main access to the proposed site is close by uh, the busy A351, the Wareham Bypass, with its 70 mile per hour speed limit. Were this site to be built, the site's traffic on and off the lane would be at a serious hazard from and to traffic leaving the bypass. A noise monitoring survey was carried out at the site with its highest reading recorded at 89.9 decibels. We understand that the maximum permissible instantaneous noise levels in bedrooms should not exceed 45 decibels. These are all material planning conditions which the parish ask you to take into consideration consideration when you make your decision. OK, and finally, we have uh, from the agent for the applicant, Martin Miller. Statement in support. The application has been made by the trustees of the Stober settlement who are part of the Remstone estate. The estate is located in the Perbex and its business interests include renting and managing a large number of residential, commercial and agricultural properties in the Wareham area to over 100 local people. The estate has submitted this planning application in order to increase the supply of housing available to local people and it wishes to retain the ownership of and manage the seven affordable housing units in perpetuity. It is exactly five years since the estate first held discussions with Arm Parish Council and Purbeck District Council officers about the potential of this site to accommodate housing for local people. The application before you today is the culmination of five years of discussions, design, iteration and assessment, and we're pleased that it is recommended for approval. 
As highlighted in the officer report, the application accords with the policies of the Arne Parish Neighbourhood Plan, which was made by Dorset Council just last month following 93% public support in the May 21 referendum. The proposed development would deliver 15 badly needed homes in the Purbex of a range of sizes, with the seven affordable housing units being provided for rent. The application site does not flood and is not predicted to flood in the future. All the proposed houses will have decent sized gardens and parking and a footway is to be provided linking the development site to the primary school and village centre. The proposed development connects to an existing SANG via an existing public footpath. It will deliver ecological mitigation measures and biodiversity net gain and will not give rise to unnecessary light pollution, overlooking or loss of privacy for adjoining residents. Once the application accords with the neighbourhood plan, it also accords with the small sites policy, policy H8 of the advanced Purbeck local plan and is specifically identified within appendix two of this plan as a small development site that Dorset Council wishes to see come forward for housing in the Purbeck area. The development of this unconstrained site provides an excellent opportunity to deliver badly needed housing for local people in the Purbex in accordance with very recent adopted development plan policies. There are no substantive objections to the application from the Environment Agency, Natural England, Dorset AONB, partnership or Dorset Council Highways and we ask that you endorse the recommendation to approve before you today. If you do, the estate looks forward to working further with council officers and stakeholders to deliver a small but sustainable development of the very highest quality. That's the end of the submissions. Thank you very Thank much you very for much stepping in at the last, last minute, minute David. David. Can you turn your You're microphone welcome. off? I'm getting I'm feedback. feedback. Thank you. OK, um, I understand we have two local members with us today, uh, both of whom wish to speak. The first one is Beryl Azard. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman, and uh, thank you uh, to the councillors of the Eastern Planning Committee and uh, Dorset Council officers uh, to uh, allow uh, us to speak for this reprieve of this planning application. Uh, we have heard from the local residents and uh, Arne Parish Council uh, are very concerned and for considerable reasons for objecting to this application for 15 dwellings, which I reiterate should be rejected for the following material planning considerations. One, the heading statement reads up to 15 residential dwellings. So from that premise, I would understand that a lesser number of dwellings could be argued and agreed with the developer. I understand that this site was originally brought forward as a rural exception site, which by its very criteria, a site of up to six dwellings where affordable housing is needed in the parish, outside the uh, settlement boundary and maybe in the Greenbelt. I see that the planning officers report that a survey in the parish found 11 families needing affordable housing. This site therefore should be offering 11, 11 affordable social housing for families and it blatantly does not, with the seven being offered of which four are one bedroom flats. This is not in line with our, our parish, um, parish council's neighbourhood plan, now approved and must be given full consideration. This outlined, um, outlined application does not fulfil the requirement for the parishioners and I would state that the developers should be restricted to building 11 dwellings in line with the parish need for affordable housing, if at all, and certainly not in this particular site, which I consider to be entirely unsuitable. If this is approved, this would set a precedent for other developers to do the same in that no village would be safe from so-called rural, rural exception sites. Uh, two, the mitigating reasoning explaining that the developer has proposed seven affordable dwellings instead of eight being 50% of what would be usual in Purbeck has been offset with negotiation with DC highways for the developer providing a pavement from the vehicle access to the site along West Lane to Corfe Road and, and also pays a lump sum. This pays, pavement was to be completed by Dorset Council as it is a dangerous route to school and had been requested for many years by me as local Dorset County Councillor and Dorset Council members, Slover School and the, and the Parish Council. 
and been in the local plan to be completed as the next phase following the widening of the pavement at the junction with Corf Road completed last year. This would have been completed without this planning application coming forward. Uh, I am concerned that an affordable dwelling is considered less important than infrastructure, uh, uh, albeit already planned for, when we have 5,000 families waiting to be housed on the DC housing list. Three, uh, the Dorset Council um, um, has signed up to the climate change and ecological emergency. And in this report from the um, planning uh, officer, it does not mention anything about this strategy being taken into account, which actually the cabinet member, uh, Councillor Ray Bryan, says all, all of this climate change uh, and emergency would be taken up with all departments of the council. So I'm sorry, but that should be taken into account. This is site is outside the settlement boundary and in the uh, Dorset AONB and contravenes the perfect local plan. The site has been subjected to flooding time and time again and only recently on the 12th of July the corner of West Lane and the bypass was underwater for a couple of days. The mitigating reasons put forward will not protect the rest of Stobel re residents, especially in Hollow Oak Road. Um, and there has been a call for the site to have an up to date hydrology survey, which you call an FRA, a flood risk assessment, um, which I believe has not been completed. Please answer this question. And I know the planning officer has sort of answered it, but I think before this uh, planning is actually um, uh, accepted, if, if it does or it's proved, then that should be it should be delayed until this FRA uh, comes to the fore from the uh, Environment Agency. These are crucial facts that need to be known now in the light of the DCCCEE policy. Would this site be sustainable and resilient? No, it would not. The local residents know that the water meadows flood on a regular basis. There is no flood defences in place. This site is considered to be a water meadow from, for the River Froome, another reason to refuse this application. Four, the access road and vehicle opening onto West Lane is proposed to be placed too near the bypass, uh, the A351 junction with West Lane. This is a 60 mile an hour fast road. I'm sorry, the parish council got that wrong. Uh, it is only 60. When ex exiting the bypass for West Lane, the access road for the new site will be very close to this junction. I request that the developer to keep the vehicle access where it is at the already, already one, making it much safer for traffic coming off or entering the bypass. In conclusion, this application should be refused on grounds of very probable flooding, therefore unsustainable, not meeting the criteria for the rural exception site. It is outside the settlement boundary in the AINB and our unique rural public area. It will not provide the affordable housing that the parish needs and as the uh, uh, approved neighbourhood plan and will set a dangerous precedent for other developers to use in the future. On balance, I consider that a refusal of this application must be made. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Barry. You managed to get a lot in in a very short time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the other local member that we have is Ryan Holloway. Ryan, you wish to speak again? Uh, good morning, Madam Chairman, and uh, thank you again for allowing me to speak. Obviously, you did hear my objections and concerns in the last uh, committee meeting. Um, just to make it quite clear, they have remained unchanged. They have. Um, as you've heard from my co councillor we are concerned about the, uh, particularly about the, uh, the lack of affordability, the 47%. Um, I personally, I still feel that is not ambitious enough, considering that this is an exception site. Yes, there is a need for housing, and I do and I do uh, acknowledge that. But I still feel that this uh, application does not meet that criteria for that housing. Secondly, also again with the flood risk as well. Obviously, as I did mention in the last committee meeting, it does it has been known to flood up through there. The River Froome is only just a stone throw away. So that, that is also another reason why I am still objecting to this site. Also as well is the open market housing as well. I'm still quite concerned with the open market housing that those are likely to be sold for second home ownerships. And that is something that is concerning me. 
that there obviously that there is a real need for local housing at the moment so that is another reason still concern obviously you have all heard that there is quite a number of the members of the public that are objecting to this site both uh, Councillor Rezard and myself have had residents contact us that are concerned about it you have also heard that the local parish is also uh, not in favour for this application and of course is um, the lack of the access along that road along there also I'm quite still quite concerned about the traffic possibly a building along that site and the access that is along there I don't think is is, is not uh, very sufficient so I don't want to repeat too much of what <laughs> Councillor Rizard has already said Madam Chair because you did hear from me last month but those are still the sticking points that uh, I have with the concerns about this site and really I still feel that planning application should not be approved for this site so I shall leave it there Madam Chair thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, certainly a theme running through all of these. Uh, before I go to the members for the debate, I'm going to come back to officers, um, particularly obviously Pete, the case officer and also Steve Savage to pick up some of the issues that have been raised by the um, public representations and the local members. Pete, do you want to take us through some stuff first and then we'll bring Steve in for the highways issues? Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, um, I'll try and cover off all the points. If I miss anything, please pick me up on it. Um, but I've scribbled notes as we've gone here. So I think the, the first thing I want to make um, to clarify is that this application is not being considered as a real exception site. Um, it, it was initially considered against that policy and officers concluded that it would have not been in compliance with that policy and would have recommended refusal on that basis. However, because the our neighbourhood plan is now adopted and forms part of the development plan, that policy, the small sites policy in our neighbourhood plan is applicable. And so this application is being recommended for approval on the basis of being compliant with policy for small sites of the our neighbourhood plan. Um, so uh, in, in reference to the quantum of affordable housing, actually um, the amount of affordable housing proposed exceeds what's set out in the our neighbourhood plan. Um, so uh, just to kind of uh, to make that clear, um, I appreciate there will be potentially some confusion because initially in the supporting statements, that's the reference that the agent had made because that was the prevailing policy at the time. But now that the neighbourhood plan has been adopted, that is the uh, that forms part of the development plan. And so the application must be considered against that. Um, Turning to some of the points raised by members of the public and the councillors, um, a number of, um, in fact, I think everyone has referenced flooding. Um, I just want to reiterate that both the Environment Agency and the Lead Local Flood Authority have been involved in this. Um, neither have raised objections. The Environment Agency, so, um, once it came to my attention that the um, that they were reviewing their data, as has been pointed out, I think in one of the the comments I did go back to Environment Agency to seek some clarification and that they've assured me that they still consider it as likely that the site will remain in flood risk zone one but out of an abundance of caution that they've advised that a further flood risk assessment is provided now their advice is that it's perfectly appropriate to do that by planning condition because they don't consider that there's a, a significant risk of an issue arising so that planning condition to provide the further flood risk assessment comes on the back of the Environment Agency's advice um, and so that is why we have that planning condition there. Um, Pete just before you move on just to really clarify that point yeah um, it is down to the applicant to do that assessment Correct. and that would have to then be submitted as part of a reserve matters application. That's right, and we okay. would we would refer that to the lead local flood authority um, for them to assess the suitability, and obviously they would need to satisfy us that the assessment is correct and appropriate at that time. Lovely, thank you for that clarification. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, so, um, uh, there were also conditions um, in relation to surface water drainage. Um, it, the site profiling has been referenced. There would be a small amount of site reprofiling at the northern edge, which um, going back to the photographs is, is the where the land starts to dip effectively as you head towards the floodplain. That would be offset by um, lowering some other parts of the land to allow to compensate effectively and again the lead local flood authority and environment agency have been aware of all this and raised no objections so as officers were satisfied that this wouldn't have a harmful impact for neighboring residents either um, so moving on from flooding um, highway safety i think i'm largely going to let steve come back on that if i might um, uh, in terms of the housing need that's been picked up um, our senior housing needs officer has um, advised me that there is a, a need in the area and that the tenure mix and the size of the dwellings proposed would help to meet that need so as officers were satisfied that the affordable housing that is proposed would meet a, a need that has been uh, has been demonstrated um, and in terms of second homes I, I believe it's Councillor Holloway who might have referred to that and possibly the parish council as I uh, discussed in the presentation we would look to apply a second homes condition um, the wording of which is in the agenda um, which would prohibit the uh, residents being used uh, oh, sorry would require the residents to be used solely as a person's principal or um, sole uh, dwelling um, so that that we consider has been addressed and that's in in accordance with the our neighborhood plan um, um I'm just trying to pick up on anything else that was uh, raised uh reference to noise the environmental health team um were consulted on the proposal they have no significant concerns about the impact on noise um and are happy that the reserve matters uh, and the layout can be can accommodate the noise from the a351 um i'm just trying to see just going through my notes to see if there's anything else that needed picking up um the only other bits that I've got uh, were about design, uh, pressure on school places. Sure. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Just quickly looking through. Um, and I think the rest you have managed to pick up. Um, okay. Oh, there was a bit about um, climate emergency and policy. OK, um, so coming to the design first, uh, the design is a reserve matter. Um, so we don't have details of the design yet. Um, that would be something that officers would consider if um, this was to proceed to reserve matters stage. Um, and obviously we could assess the suitability of the design then and we would take into account all the relevant policy that is in place at the time of the application being received. Um, in terms of school provision, um, the our neighbour plan is the adopted plan and this would have been considered when that policy was being developed um, and so we're satisfied that we're not going to put undue pressure on the school and that would have been taken into account um, as part of it uh, in terms of the climate emergency um, there's obviously uh, that so the the provision of the pavement would link to Corf road um, Corf Road is on a bus route to and from Wareham, Swanage and onto Poole. Um, you also have access to amenities um, within Stobrook such as the school um, and so it is entirely possible that you could, you wouldn't necessarily have to use a car to get to and from anywhere from the site. So in terms of climate emergency, um, the, the site provides a sustainable option and in terms of recreation again with there's a link to the Bog Lane Sang, so you theoretically do not need to use your car to get everywhere. We're not talking about a site that is isolated in the middle of nowhere and your only option is to drive everywhere to get your to get your shopping or to get to the school or, or other amenities. OK, thank you very much for that. On that climate emergency point, um, I'm just going to ask Anna Lee, and sorry I haven't given you any advance warning of this, Anna. Can you just um, jump in a little bit about um, climate emergency and policy for the council and where we are with that at the moment? 
Thank you, Madam Chairman. Yes, yeah, so in regard to taking account of the climate emergency in our emerging policies, we have the work on the Dorset Council local plan, and that is still at a relatively early stage. So at this stage, we are not able to um, give weight to any emerging work on the Dorset Council local plan, but the matter of the climate emergency is being fully considered through that in terms of any ch future changes to policy. Um, I don't know if that helps at all. Um, thank you. Thank you. I think that just gives us a little bit of clarification of where we are with that. Uh, so that just leaves us with the highway matters. So, Steve, there's a few bits and pieces there for you to pick up. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I, I've also gone through and made some notes from the objectors and the two councillors who've spoken. Um, there was mention of doubling of traffic uh, on West, West Lane itself uh, for a development this size and type we'd be looking for up to 92 way movements per day. So the level of traffic is comparatively low. There's no way it's a doubling of traffic traveling along the lane. On-site parking was mentioned, as Peter mentioned, that's a reserve matters, which can be addressed at that stage should permission be granted. Um, there's been some mention of the distance of the proposed access from the bypass junction to the west. It actually scales off the plan as 53 meters, the visibility displays shown on the plan. Peter, I don't know if you could just go back to that access plan. The visibility displays comply fully with the guidance um, given to us by the government for manual for streets, which provides safe stopping distance. The one after that, if you may, please, Pete. The safe stopping distance for a car traveling at 30 miles per hour is 43 meters, which are the dashed lines that you can see on there. So it complies completely with um, safety guidance. Drivers, when they're coming off the bypass, should be adhering to the speed limits and driving in accordance with the highway code. So we do anticipate people are actually slowing down, turning into the bend, into the junction at, and traveling at 30 miles per hour. The 43 meters isn't an emergency stopping distance, it's an actual safe stopping distance. So there's a parameter of safety built within that. So as an authority, we're satisfied that the position shown is um, sufficient and complies with safety guidance. Um, Increased risk of accidents at the junction to the west. Well, we've investigated the accidents here. In the last five years, there have been three accidents. It's not identified as a cluster spot, and the accidents are basically driver error of vehicles um, pulling out in the path of others. There's been incidents with a the cyclist there, so we don't feel there's an increased risk, risk of accidents here. Traffic congestion was mentioned. Um, I think in terms of traffic congestion, we're not talking about the uh, centre of a town here or a, uh, a city. It's a rural road on a rural bypass. Congestion certainly isn't an issue as far as we're concerned. Um, as Councillor Ezard mentioned, wearing bypass isn't a 70 mile per hour speed limit. It's subject to the national speed limit of 60 miles per hour. Again, drivers should be driving with due care and attention along it, looking at road hazards and the like. Um, Councillor has mentioned that a pavement was completed by DC. Um, I've only come to this site very late, but I'm unaware of any programme for the future improvement of this footway. I think the important point with this particular application is that we're saying that the provision of that pedestrian connectivity into the centre of Stober itself is essential for this application to be, um, be approved. The applicant has indicated that the footway can be provided within highway land and that they will fund it. And as Peter's mentioned, that will be subject to a Section 278 agreement. So the footway improvement, if this is approved, will be critical and essential for the development to proceed. So we're we're very hopeful that if it's approved, that will be um, provided in the very near future. Um, and Councillor Holloway again mentioned the uh, the speed uh, the speed limit, the access position, etc., which I've already addressed. I think the critical point for members to consider here is that the MPPF very clearly says that permission should only be refused on highway grounds if there's an unacceptable impact on highway safety, which hopefully I've explained there isn't, uh, and if there's a or if there's a severe cumulative impact on the road network. Well, the cumulative impact is generally in terms of traffic movements and numbers. I'm unaware of there being any impact on traffic on the network due to increased traffic flow numbers. As I've explained, it's a very low scale development. We've no impact, we've no um, uh, capacity issues here. So I don't feel that it ticks either of those two boxes in terms of the MPPF. So hopefully, Chair, that's answered the questions. Obviously, I'm here for any further ones that you may have from um, members as they come up. Thank you. 
That's lovely. Thank you both very much and Anna as well for all the extra information. I have one speaker and that's Alex Brenton. Thank you, Chair. Um, I spoke about this one last time and we, we discussed this. I have gone back through the report and um, I'm quite interested now to hear the, um, should we say the opposition, the, the public antagonism to this. Um, it does worry me that a lot of the complaints are from residents of Hollow Oak uh, for two very reasons. One, obviously they feel that they will be the most affected by this if it happens, but also slightly cynically, they are the last property at the edge of the of the village and they would no longer be, um, you know, they would lose their sort of immunity of having a green field next door. I have driven past this um, corner, the junction with the A351 and West Lane multiple times, even this summer when we have, and I understand the fear about traffic collisions because to be honest, sitting waiting to turn right in the middle of the 351 to turn right into West Lane is quite hairy. It has been over the last few years slightly improved with the slightly better splay and a bollards in the middle, but it still feels somewhere quite vulnerable. So I can understand the, the locals feeling this is an issue. But by the time you are sitting there waiting to turn right, you have virtually stopped. You might possibly be in first gear. So I can't see traffic whizzing off the bypass as being an issue. What I could see is cyclists along West Lane who then try to cross to go out um, towards Kimridge, that is more of an issue, but that's an issue already. I don't think you're going to get more cyclists in living in Hollow Oak dashing off. The business about whether or not it is a rural exception site, to be really cynical, this piece of land between a very thick um, screen edge of, of trees and shrubs um, and the rest of the village, Logically, if you look at the map, logically you would infill it in the same way as we have in Upton and places like that. It is what is happening in many towns that basically once a bypass is in place, you build out to it. I mean, look at Wareham. So there is a logic to building here. Uh, the site isn't huge. Uh, I am concerned about this. The, uh, I know we're still at. Um, outline level, but the proposed mix of properties um, is worrying because we're getting more um, requests from going to be homeless families rather than single people. Um, so I am concerned that of the affordable housing, they are so small. They are one, you know, there's predominantly the one bedroomed in the, the affordable proposal. Um, and whereas I would rather have them as three and four because four, three and four bedroom because that's what actually the demand is at the moment. Um, so I, I question that, should we say that the accommodation spread. Um, but I think when it comes down to it, the crunch is whether or not we are building or we would propose or accept building on a site which may not actually be in the um, the regular flooding area, but it certainly is a sponge area for the floodplain. Um, will we actually be cr just creating ourselves more problems? Um, I would like, I, I, my instinct is to say, my, what should we say, my green instinct is to say no, but I understand there is such a push for small sized spaces. And if it wasn't for the flood risk issue here, I would be perfectly happy with this site. So I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. My next speaker is David Took. Thank you, Chair. Um, a question um, 
really many local councils have been castigated over many years for allowing development in, in areas that are liable to flooding uh, with a consequent knock on for, for insurance claims and damages to 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 people's property. Um, I note that there's a, a a new flood risk assessment that's going to be required uh, as part of the reserved matters. Um, should that flood risk assessment determine there's a higher flood risk than the current one? My presumption is that that will not affect this outline permission because this outline permission will have been granted. Um, and that the only remedy would then be uh, something in, in, in the reserved matters to, to handle a higher level of flooding. However, if we were looking at this now with a high level of flooding, we'd probably refuse it. And my suggestion would be that we should actually refuse this until the updated flood risk assessment is available. Um, and depending on the results of that, the applicant can reapply at that time. Uh, I'd also just mention very briefly that the, uh, the climate and ecological emergency, the point is that that should be considered as part of all reports, at least that was my that was my understanding, not simply the new local plan, but everything. Everything should have a, a, an ecological uh, statement within it. Um, but the, the crux of what I'm saying is, is uh, I, would, I would think we should refuse this until the new FRA is available and the applicant reapply depending on the, the outcome of that. Thank you. OK, um, I do have another speaker, but there's a couple of important points that I think we need to get officers to respond to. Um, mainly the issue with the flooding and the need to wait until a new assessment has been done. Can you uh, come back on that, please? Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, so when I spoke to the Environment Agency, um, they advised me the site currently does not sit within flood risk zones two or three, which are the, the areas that we wouldn't look to build housing under normal circumstances. Um, and their suggestion of um, an additional flood risk assessment is effectively an abundance of caution. They they did not say to me, and the, the comments are online, that they expect that they believe the site designation will be changed. Um, the flood risk assessment refers to dealing with um, exceptional circumstances um, and they're asking for that to be looked at again, but they don't consider that the site is going to necessarily be at a high risk of flooding. Had they had done so, I would have expected them to change their recommendation um, to officers um, and so being guided by their advice um, they suggested that a planning condition would be appropriate in this instance um, whereas in other situations it may not be and, and that's why we've proceeded with this route instead of asking for it up front prior to bringing it before the committee. Okay thank you and the other big issue was again affordable housing. Yeah, so uh, again, um, as I mentioned in the presentation, our housing needs officer has seen the proposal, seen the tenure mix and the size of the dwellings um, and is happy that that would meet a need that is on the current housing needs register. Um, and so therefore has raised no objection to the, the affordable housing that's proposed. Adam Chairman, may I come back on the flood risk? Very briefly. Um, I hear what you're saying um, regarding the uh, the Environment Agency's recommendations, but until they have done this flood risk, it's simply guesswork. It, it's assumptions and uh, there's nothing concrete behind it. So I, I still don't understand why we should take these sort of as read, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. We don't think it will until they've done the work. We don't know and if that work then surprises us we'll, we'll be caught um, with our proverbial trousers down uh, and I think we could we could fix that by simply saying 
let's wait until the updated FRA is available and then we'll we'll make a decision. But I'll leave it there. Thank you. OK, um, I think to be fair to the environment agency, it's a bit more than a nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, they are a statutory body and will give due diligence to whatever guidance they give this council. Shane, you wanted to speak. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Madam, just to advise an officer's request to speak in the chat bar. Just that, Naomi, do you wish to come in first? Yeah, just to reiterate um, some of the points Peter has made regarding the um, Environment Agency response. Um, they do note that it is, a, it is a precaution and the condition they requested specifically notes the revised FRA will be used to inform the design and layout uh, of the final scheme. So um, the principle of, of development um, would be acceptable, but obviously they want the updated details um, in order to finalise the design of the scheme. Thank you for that. Shane, over to you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, as, as, as yourself and officers and, and members know that quite often I have a nervousness around um, development sites when we're doing them and the amount of detail that we have on any fl future flood mitigation. Um, and while this is an outline um, plan application and obviously um, the flooding details can be dealt with um, when we get to the reserve matters application when that comes in later, um, I wonder whether we could put a condition in this because quite often we see developments coming before us as a committee where we don't have the detail, intrinsic detail of how any future flooding is going to be dealt with on the site. And usually we have applications come before us where the officers are going to deal with that with flooding engineers and such like, um, and um, Wessex Water or other outside third parties and how they're going to deal with either ground surface water flooding <coughs> or hydrology flooding. Um, I just wonder whether we would be able to make a condition in this outline planning application to say that when it actually comes before us with reserve matters, we will have a full detail of that flood mitigation that will be pertaining to this site that will come before us so that we're in a much better position, whoever sits on this committee at that time, to make a determination with all the information in front of them. Would, would that be possible? I have a view. Um, I'm sure Pete will correct me if I'm wrong, that it would be more of an informative note. Um, we already have condition 12 of the uh, um, of the proposal, which states, and bear with me, I shall just read it out for members. Um, my computer will play ball. OK, so condition 12. Um, states a detailed surface water management scheme for the site based on the hydrological and hydrogeological context of the development and including clarification of how surface water is to be managed during construction must be submitted in writing with any reserve maths application relating to the layout. The surface water scheme shall be fully implemented in accordance with the submitted details before any of the dwellings are occupied. So I, I I think I consider that we are already addressing the point that Councillor Bartlett's made. I mean, obviously, I'm happy to discuss further if he doesn't feel that that covers what what he's suggesting. But we we have already stipulated that we'd expect to see that as part of the reserve mass application. We would want to see the detail. And, and through you, Madam Chairman, that would then come in that reserve matters meeting um, before the members to see that detail. It would be concluded in the report. You, you're muted. Uh, uh, sorry, so it, um, the details would be would form part of the planning submission um, and it would be something we'd look to address in the officer's report. Um, I should point out as well, I missed condition 13, um, which also requires uh, details of maintenance and management of the schemes, because obviously it's not just providing the schemes, it's making sure that they're maintained and managed so that they continue to work correctly in, in perpetuity. Um, but um, so the, those details would have to be submitted as part of the application because that's what the planning condition requires. And we would then address that in the officer report, um, whichever officer is dealing with it um, would look at that. And obviously the response from the lead local flood authority who would assess um, the details that are provided would also be made public. So all of that detail would be available publicly available to members as well as members of the public to see what's been proposed, whether, uh, you know, whether the engine drainage engineers consider it to be suitable um, and that would be addressed in the report. 
Okay. okay. Could, I, could I come back? Shay, one more time before you do, Anna Lee wants I, to come in. Certainly. Um, th thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to clarify in regards to any reserved matters application would need to follow our usual um, scheme of delegation process. So, so we have that process in the Constitution in terms of whether or not it's referred to the um, planning committee. So there'd be the usual process there for any reserved matters application. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Shane. Thank you, Madam Chairman. It was just, um, just to go over the on page 20 uh, um, agenda item 6.0. Um, the balancing area that's talked about, I, I, I take that that's effectively going to be like an attenuation pond. Attenuation pond, is that is that what we're talking about? Yeah, so uh, effectively, as part of the reprofiling, um, where a, a, a small area of the land to the north end of the site would be raised slightly, that would be offset by lowering some of some. Uh, some land elsewhere in the site um, to offset that. The details of that haven't been provided yet. That will form part of reserve matters. And I should mention that one of the conditions, I believe condition three, um, relates to the applicant providing levels, um, detailed land levels as well. So again, we can see exactly where that would be taking place and that would form part of the reserve matters application. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Davy Took, you wish to come back? Just to say that on my comment about the EA response being nudge, nudge, wink, wink, I think it may have been a little colloquial uh, for, for, for some members, but it, 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 I think my point remains, which is this is not a formal decision. This is simply what we've been told rather than, yes, we've done the, the work and this is the result. And my point is, until they've done the work, we do not know precisely what that work will throw up. Thank you. Again, it's about level of risk. The, it is down to the applicant to do the work if this uh, outline is granted and then that work will come through as part of a reserve matters application and any information and anything new will be shown through that at that time. Shane, you wish to come back? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Yes, it was it was concerning the um, pavement. If I can just move on to that briefly, please. Um, the ward member, Councillor Ezard, stated that um, it was her belief that Dorset Council had it in a future works programme to provide the pavement. Um, but the I, I fully appreciate that Mr Savage, due to obviously things beyond his control with the, one of our officers retiring wasn't able possibly to give an answer I just wonder whether any other officer had the information on that um, pertains to that pavement and any future plans by Dorset Council to provide that pavement for that safe route into school um, because it does have an impact on the uh, housing numbers in terms of affordable numbers on the site I appreciate the fact that central government of um, cut funding for highways and I appreciate the fact that Dorset Council's in a situation budgetary wise that it is difficult um, to provide the necessary infrastructure with Dorset Council but they aren't using section 106 monies or monies from developments to provide the infrastructure that we need and obviously a safe route into school is going to be intrinsically important um, for, for this village and I just wondered if the officers had any information on whether Dorset Council had plans in the future to provide that pavement or whether we are going to be completely reliant on the um, develop a contribution to put that pavement in place. Thank you. Steve, you look as though you wish to come back on that one. I, I do if I may, Madam Chairman. Um, what I could say, Councillor Bartlett, is that while we were um, thinking about this, I did look on um, Highways Explorer. There's a, a layer on it which indicates the forward planner for highway works. And uh, one of the criteria there is capital works and designer assessment. And there is nothing down for West Lane, as far as I'm aware. So uh, I can't give you a categorical answer whether there is or isn't. Um, my initial indication here is that um, there is nothing initially programmed. Obviously, Councillor Ezard um, has been at the forefront of this with regards to negotiations with the council, uh, whether she'd be able to provide any further information or a timeline for this. But I can only say that I'm unaware of anything and I can't see anything on our um, on our Explorer data that indicates that it's uh, in the immediate future. Thank you. 
Okay, I understand the comments, however, that Councillor Ezard is not a member of this committee and has set her piece as local member. Peter, you wanted to come back, please. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I just want to make the point here that um, when when this application was being considered under a rural exception scheme, the provision of affordable housing was not considered sufficient. However, the provision of affordable housing proposed at this point is compliant with the Our Neighbourhood Plan. So even if we were in a situation where the pavement was going to be provided under Dorset Council scheme works anyway, um, that wouldn't mean that the officer recommendation would change to recommend refusal because in fact they actually now meet the criteria for affordable housing in relation to the armed neighbourhood plan so I, I don't think we would be able to achieve a higher level of affordable housing provision as a result given that we're now assessing the application against policy for the small sites of the armed neighbourhood plan. Thank you very much for that clarification. Shane. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I mean, that was that was a really useful um, clarification um, the office just, just given. Um, I think from everything that I've heard, Madam Chairman, and I think in terms of all the material considerations applying to this outline plan application, and I think some of the questions that have been raised over it, there is the ability to address those when we come to reserve matters application. And I think on that basis, Madam Chairman, I'm, I'm quite happy to propose that we go with the officer recommendation on this with the conditions as laid out. And I'm, and I'm proposing that, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much. Do we have a seconder, please? Robin Cook. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, yes, um, I'm happy to second it. I do understand uh, the concerns over the flooding, which are very, very important. And as we go forward, we'll obviously learn more about that. But in essence, I mean, I struggle with this initially, but when I read again, I think it fits it's it fits so well as an outline application. The principle of development fits so well with the our neighborhood plan. I think everything in there has now been addressed for this outline because um, even where they said about the um, the narrow unpaved nature of West Lane as being a reason for not using this site. Now that's planned to be overcome. Uh, so really, apart from the flooding, which we can strengthen up on and you know we were in danger of straying into reserve matters this morning and this is an outline uh, so providing we can get those assurances when it comes forward for reserve matters which i'm sure we will um, we can address those and deal with it at that time but i'm happy on that basis to second uh, the proposal as shown uh, it's it, interesting on the proposal there is a um, an, an add on is there not on the recommendation about the refusal if the agreement can't be reached? Am I right? I'm just looking back through my notes here. That's, there is. Uh, I was going yeah. to, when you'd finished, I was going to ask the officers to put up the uh, slide that shows the full recommendation. OK, well, thank you, Chairman. I finished. Thank OK, you. thank you. While that's, uh, that was quick. Uh, John Worth, you indicated that you were happy to second. Was there anything else you wanted to say as you haven't spoken yet? Um, yeah, yeah, I was happy to um, second that proposal, um, and I'd, I'd just like to say that there, there was some comment about insufficient affordable housing for the people on the local area list, um, and my comment is, well, uh, we are going to get some affordable housing, so it's there's never going to be sufficient affordable housing anywhere, and to get some, and you know, it is is quite a number of dwellings. Um, is is better than non, none at all. That was all I was going to say, but I would have been happy to have uh, seconded the proposal. OK, thank you very much. I have no further speakers, so I'm now going to move to the, the vote. Um, can I thank members and officers for their diligence in um, the way they have handled today, not only going through the presentation, but also in the way that you have responded to the public representations, because that was um, due to the technical issues, something that we didn't get last time. So it was really important that we gave it a full airing this time. Um, and I think you have picked up and debated the key issues that the public were concerned about. 
So I'm now going to go to the vote. You have the uh, recommendation on the screen as it appears in the agenda. So I will take the roll call. Shane Bartlett. Madam Chairman, I have listened to the officer's presentation and I've taken part in the debate and I vote to grant. <laughs> okay. Mike Barron. Hello, Madam Chair. I have listened intently to this debate as this planning application at this stage is compliant with the small sites policy of the Arn Neighbourhood Plan. I am in favour of granting approval. Thank you. Alex Brenton. Thank you, Chairman. I've been present throughout and participated. I am still divided in my head about it. Therefore, as a precautionary matter, I will vote against. OK, thank you. Robin Cook. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I've listened to the, the presentation and taken part in the debate and uh, I'm minded to support the uh, proposal. Thank you. Mike Dyer. Uh, I've been present throughout, uh, heard the entire debate and vote to grant. Thank you. Barry Gorringe. I've been present throughout. Um, I've listened to the uh, presentation and the debate and I'm recommending approval. Thank you. David Morgan. I have listened to the debate and I vote for. OK. Judy Robinson. <coughs> I've listened very carefully to the presentation and the debate and I'm very divided and I'm minded to refuse. OK. David Took. I've listened carefully to the debate. I've taken part in it and I've listened to the whole presentation. I'm not persuaded that it is it, it is acceptable and I will therefore vote to refuse. OK, thank you. And John Worth. Uh, I've listened to the officer's report and the full presentation. And I found it very, very informative um, and I'm minded to support. OK. Thank you very much, David. I had missed that. Um, You've missed me out, I'm afraid. I have. Um, I'm also being a little bit um, sideswiped by the background noise from someone. Um, so, John Worth said that he is in support. Bill Trite, you have the last vote. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chairman. I've listened to the whole discussion. I've listened to all the arguments and I've heard nothing to change my previous view that this application ought to be refused. OK, thank you. So let me just double check that I haven't missed anyone else, David. No, that's that's everyone. OK, so the outcome is. The outcome is seven, four and four against. OK, so the application is granted as per the recommendation in today's agenda. Thank you for a very full debate on that one. We have one last item on the agenda and that's the planning and appeals summary. There are six appeal outcomes. Uh, they're all from the North Dorset area, so I would suggest that you take it as noted today and if there is anything that you wish to speak to officers about you do so outside of this meeting because we don't have anyone from the North Dorset area supporting us today. Chairman, Chairman it's Phil Crowther, sorry, um, I think you still need to go to Anna Lee to make the formal decision following sorry. the vote. <laughs> I do indeed, and I did have it written down and I've jumped right past it, so my apologies. So the recommendation on the application before us that we have just discussed has been minded decision by the committee for grant, and that does need to have delegated approval according to our constitution by Anna Lee, Head of Planning. 
Thank you, Madam Chairman. I confirm that I have heard the officer presentation, um, all the representations and the debate, and that this decision will be um, decided in line with the committee um, minded to resolution. So it will be approved subject to the section 106. Thank you. Thank you very much. My apologies to you and to the supporting team who are always there to catch me when I fall. So uh, planning appeals, I hope you're just happy to note and you'll be pleased to know there are no urgent items. Therefore, at 11.51, I declare the meeting closed. Thank you all very much for taking part today. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Thank you very much.